Hello and welcome to another episode of Photoshop for the Scientist. Now today I am quite excited for this because I really enjoy doing this and this is uh, coloring an SEM image. And I think this is the best way that we can do it because uh, we're going to do it completely non-destructively which means that at any point we can change the colors that we've chosen or we can change what we've colored or the way we've colored it and our, uh, final, or our original image will be totally intact uh, which is great. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, let's go up to the starting image here. And this is just a regular old SEM micrograph from a friend of mine, which we've got some bacteria chilling with a cell here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go up and make sure that your mode is not grayscale but RGB color, because it's not going to be a very colorful image if we're in grayscale. So basically, the uh, method we're going to use here is using the quick selection tool which is an often overlooked tool I think um, sometimes mostly overlooked because it's hidden under the magic wand which you might normally see here by default but if you click and hold the magic wand tool you'll see the quick selection tool which you can also get to by pushing W or if the magic wand tool is there you can push shift W and that toggles between the two uh, if we go up and look at our settings here we can see that we want to use uh, an additive uh, selection here, which means that every time we click, it'll be our selection will be added to what we've already selected, which is good. Uh, brush size uh, here in this image of 40 looks like it works well, but you can choose whatever you like. Sample layers we don't need to worry about because there's only one layer, and auto enhance um, we can go ahead and click because that will sort of uh, make it a bit easier to find the edges. Uh, Photoshop will try its best to sort of soften the transitions a little bit. So there's no harm in checking it. So what we need to do is click along these bacterial cells and we're just trying to kind of get a rough outline here. Sometimes Photoshop will probably get confused and select some things we don't want as has just happened right here. <clears throat> but that's totally fine. We'll come back to that. So I'm just going through, clicking and dragging over the bacteria. We see there's some more extra stuff, actually quite a bit of extra stuff, but not to worry. Let's get this guy over here. Just clicking and dragging. Okay, so I think I've got most of the bacteria. Now we want to deselect whatever we don't want, and to do that you press and hold the Alt key and click and drag. And So I'm just going to deselect all of this cell area and just hold in alt the whole time trying to make my way around the bacteria things are coming together yes this is looking very nice uh, we'll get over here just trying to get right up close to the edges oh yes this is beautiful uh... let's see down here up here yeah this is looking good so i think i'm pretty happy oh, what about this spot right here Yeah. I'm pretty happy with the quick selection tool, but I'll tell you, there's a way that you can have a little more control too, and that's if you go into the quick select, or sorry, the quick mask uh, button here. And so what this does is basically shows you what you've selected. So anything that's this kind of pinky red means it's not selected, and everything that stays the original gray is selected. And so now we can go in with the brush tool, which is over here, or you can get to by pushing B, and start painting in your mask, uh, which gives you a little more control, or a little more manual control. So if your palette is set to black here, you can click what you want to continue to mask. So just like this, I don't want to select that. Maybe I'll sneak in here. And you'll see here I've gone into my bacteria, which I don't want to do. So if you're black and white, uh, if you're foreground and background are black and white, you can push the X key and go to white and then paint that away and that will add it back into your selection. Yeah, I've done a bad job and I feel bad. Yeah, let's do this, add it back in, switching back to black, color in this area, and maybe tighten that up a bit. And so really it's just a matter of pushing X and uh, trying to paint in sort of as carefully as you can. I'm being a little sloppy today just to try to keep things fast. But when you're doing it, you can make sure you take your time to do a nice job. Oh, oh dear, look at, look at oh, I'm all over the place here. Let's try to fix that. I guess this little spot. Let's get these spots here and here. Maybe come up along here around this edge. 
and I'm just again clicking and holding with my mouse gotta have a bit of a steady hand but after hours of practice you will be a pro we'll get in here color that maybe fix up this area and you know what I'm I'm satisfied with that for today so what we can do is go back down here to exit the click quick mask mode and you see now I've got my selection all around my bacteria so now what we want to do is go down to this uh, adjustment layer and choose solid color <clears throat> and now it's just a matter of choosing whatever color you like and I think for this I'll maybe choose a kind of a light blue for my bacteria and then I'll click OK and obviously it looks like crap right now so the real magic is when we come into the blending mode drop down list here and I know this is gonna fall off the screen but um, what we're gonna choose is the color blend mode and what you can see here is now you can see the definition in the bacteria but they've also been given this blue color and so this blend mode will keep sort of your black and white luminance information but give you a, it'll put hue information on top of of the image so there's that <clears throat> now what we need to do is go back and click on the background layer again and we'll do the exact same thing so we'll get the quick selection tool see and I don't know why why do you do this all right fine we're back with the click quick selection tool and some weird menu shenanigans that I don't really understand but we're gonna do the same thing select the cell and this time we can be a little sloppier and I'll show you why in a second if we get some of this bacteria it will not be a problem but as long as we get the cell that's what we're looking for and so a handy little shortcut we can use is if we go up to the layer mask we created when selecting the cell uh, the bacterial cells and if you hold control and alt and click this mask it automatically deselects the bacteria from your selection that you just made so instead of having to do it all manually uh, this does it right quick <clears throat> and so we'll just do the exact same thing again we'll go to the layer adjustment uh, button there choose solid color uh, I think I'm gonna go with a yellow this time to make it kind of like an egg because why not and again we'll go down and choose color which you'll have to believe me is what I'm doing and now if we want to do the background again we'll click the background layer uh, this one's even easier we can just click the marquee tool and select the whole thing or if you're into shortcuts you can just click control a uh, and that will select all and again we'll use the same trick as we did for the last one so we'll hold shift and uh, sorry that's uh, control and alt and click first the cell uh, layer mask and then the bacterial layer mask and that will deselect everything we've selected previously leaving us only with the background selection <clears throat> again we'll click solid color and if I want to choose let's say some purple <clears throat> we'll click OK and again we'll go down to color blend mode uh, and this is a little bright so what you can do is choose another blend mode uh, I find soft light works quite nicely and really it's just a matter of going through seeing what you like uh, which work the best uh, generally color will be your number one option but uh, in this case I like to go soft light for the background <clears throat> and so now this is great because at any point uh, we can change the color uh, that we've chosen if we don't like it say we want to change the background uh, to maybe a green uh, we just double click on that color mask or uh, layer there and it'll bring up the <coughs> color dialog box and we can change it we'll say okay but if you want to change them all at the same time uh, if you first click on this top layer and choose adjustment layer again and choose hue saturation you can play with the hue slider to adjust all three colors at the same time and really your uh, imagination is your only limit here so uh, you know what I really like the look of that so we'll close that off and I think we'll call it there for today so thanks for watching uh, hopefully this was informative for you if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and with that note uh, let's all remember that we spent uh, you know loads of time to get your data so I think it's worth just spending a little bit of extra time and making sure that it looks amazing alright thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time